All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah. I hope all are doing well, all the scattered people who are scattered to the four corners of the earth. Let's go before the Most High in a word of prayer. I bow before the righteous, most holy Father. Hallelujah. Hosanna, almighty Yahweh. Thank you, Papa, for your love and kindness. Great are you, Yahweh. Hey. Bow before you, O sovereign one, worship and praise you, and revere you and extol you. I uh, recognize I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of anything I've done to offend you, to offend others. Wash me, purge me, and cleanse me. Let your Holy Spirit come and impact this uh, presentation. Let your power prevail, illuminate, enlighten, strengthen, direct, encourage, heal, deliver, purge, wash, cleanse. Do all things that you need to do in us that we might be your people. Hallelujah. Showing forth your glory. Now I commit this prayer and I praise you in your holy name. Amen. And get the hallelujah. We are celebrating African Heritage Month. Hallelujah. Honoring our ancestors and the wonderful encouragements. First of all, encouragements, accomplishments is the word I'm trying to say. Honoring their accomplishments. Honoring their strength. Hallelujah. Their tenacity. And so, as I was saying, honoring uh, what our ancestors have endured, all the horrors, the inhumane cruelties um, that uh, they experience crossing from uh, Africa over to the Americas, and yet they survive. So we give the most high praise for their strength, their tenacity, their perseverance, you know, that all that they needed to um, stay alive, right? And they made it. And because of that, we are here. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. And many of us are going back to the land. So we are honoring our African Heritage Month. All of the accomplishments in science, in math, in politics, in, in different inventions, in poetry, authors, right? Um, in um, music and entertainment, in sports. In business, uh, those who are uh, uh, phenomenal entrepreneurs. So we are so grateful. Those who have who were able to become free slaves. I mean, free slaves. Does that make any sense? <laughs> but you know what? That kind of makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we're slaves in the mind, right? A free slave is a slave of the mind, right? So uh, that they were able to be set free from slavery. So we praise the most high for that. Even during some really horrible times, difficult times, right? They were making some really great accomplishments. So how much more uh, for us? And we praise the most high for those in the 21st century also who are doing great things. So um, let's go ahead and start the presentation now. All right, and let's see. Get it going, get it going, get it going. All right, and um, <laughs> I need to share my screen. Let's do that. So again, hope all are doing well. And here we go. All right. <sighs> And this presentation is going to be focusing a great deal on the family, because that is the foundation. Walking in the ways of the Most High. What does that entail? What are we required to do? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Okay. And it looks like Deuteronomy 29 and through 29 through 25. Let's read that really quickly. This is a long presentation, so I'm going to break it into two parts. Maybe, maybe two or three, we should see. So Deuteronomy 29, uh, oops, yikes. Deuteronomy 29, 25, starting at 25. The, and the answer will be, excuse me, mm -mm. it is because this people abandoned the covenant of Yah, the Yah of their ancestors, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. So the Most High made a covenant with his people, those who he chose, who he set apart. 
They went off and worshiped other gods and they bowed down to them. So we see the Most High has standards, right? For his people, they did not know these other gods, right? Gods he had not given them. Therefore, Yah's anger burned against this land so that he brought on it all the curses written in this book. In his furious anger and in the great wrath, in great wrath, Yah uprooted them from the land and thrust them to another land as it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wound up in the Americas, right? Because of this disobedience, we shall say, according to the script. Let's continue. So walking in the ways of the most high, the way the way the most high has ways and standards that we are supposed to follow. Let's look at Genesis 12, 1 through 4. All right, and we are there. And Yah said, Yah had said to Abram, get from your country, your people, and from your father's household to the land I will show you. So Abraham had to be uprooted from the place where he was. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great. <laughs> the Most High gives a fame that no one else can give. Mm -hmm. And you will be a blessing. This is what he intended for his people. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. He will deal with the enemies of his people. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. And isn't that the case? All of the nations on the earth are blessed through the chosen people, through all of our designs, all of our creations. Our imprint is there. Mm -hmm. All of the nations are being blessed, whether they're coming into the land and uh, squandering it and plundering it and taking the resources or just stealing our, our ideas. How many times has that happened? Music, right? Many of our people doing what, the 60s? They didn't really get the money that they deserve, right? Because of the other people who had control over the music industry. And today they still do. So they're being blessed through our gifts and talents. Let's continue. So Abram went as Yah had told them and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he was when he set out from Haran. Okay, so he promised to bless um, our ancestor Abraham. And through him, we are blessed. Through him, all the nations are blessed. Let's look at Genesis 18 and 19. And we are there. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children. Mm, hallelujah. It's such a wonderful thing when a man is the head of his household and he is directing his family, directing his children. The man is a director. He is the captain of the ship. He's the CEO. He's the high priest of the household. He is in charge when the man is in charge. A righteous man, that is, because we're talking about succession and righteousness. The household runs smoothly. This is the way the Most High has designed it, that the man is the head. The Most High is over the man. The man is over the family. Hallelujah. For I have chosen him so he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the ways of Yah by doing what is right and just. So that Yah will bring about for Abraham and about what will bring about for Abraham what he had promised him. We get the promises, we get the blessings when we do what the Most High says. We don't do what he says, then we get the curses, right? We get the wrath, we get the punishment, we get the reprimands, right? So he put the man in charge. Yeah, there's no question about it. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Succession of, of, of righteousness. Succession of righteousness supposed to be righteousness. What happened here? <laughs> a family affair. Hallelujah. Editor, where's my editor to help me with some little errors I'm making? All right. All right. And let's see here. Righteousness proceeds from where? The most high. He's at the top. He's sovereign. He's in charge, right? And some call him Yahweh, Yahuwah, creator, God. Some call him Sonini Nanini. Some call him Nzambe. Different names, Z uh, Yame, like in Ghana. I learned that name, Yame Yiye, God is good. I'll praise the Most High, Chukwu. They call him in um, Oyibo land, Chukwu, Cheneke, Emeno, Eze, Igwe, all these different names, which means king. Hallelujah to all praise to the Most High. Yeah, I felt like just throwing up a fist, you know. <laughs> when, um, during um, black uh, uh, the 60s, it was like black power, black love. You know, they, they, they use fists, right? So power to the people, right, is a symbol of the fist. And power to the people, that's in um, Psalm 68. Let's just read that really quickly. I believe it's Psalm 68. And 
Let's see. I'll write real quickly Psalm 68. I know I could um, also use the Bible on, online too. That would kind of help. So I'm not really bending down. Power to the people. Okay. And it says here, you, Yah, are awesome in your sanctuary. Yah of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Hallelujah. When we do what we're supposed to be doing, we get that power. Right? So let's continue. So the standards of righteous, of righteousness, forgive that, right? When you start learning other languages, African languages, then the English becomes confusing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm, mm -hmm. That's another sermon right there. So the standards of righteousness with the laws of Yah, they they follow through the laws of Yah, right? And I was supposed to be playing a little bit of um, Bob Marley because, you know, we want to honor some little music. Let's just play a little bit while I just pause in the moment, right? As we're honoring our ancestors, we're honoring our music, one of uh, the contributions, accomplishments, and the music of the past, and the present, we, we praise him for the music that uplifts, that encourages, that strengthens, that tells our story in such a powerful way like no one else can tell our story but us. So this story is very, um, this song is very prolific, it's very prophetic. Exodus, uh -huh. he's saying something here. The people of Yah are moving. Mm -hmm. We exited out of Africa and many are exiting are not exiting out of the Babylon and coming back to the land. Movement of the people, the people of the Most High are moving. Hallelujah. Yes. Exodus movement. Hallelujah. Exodus, all praises. All right, so that's all I'm going to play for that. And so the Most High has standards. Let's read Leviticus 18 and 5 really quickly. Okay. And Exodus 18 and 5 reads. I'm saying Exodus, but clearly I'm looking at the word Leviticus. <laughs> Please help me here, Father. Leviticus 18 and 5. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Let your glory now fill this place. You're a mighty God, and I love you. Let your glory now fill this place. Let your presence now fill this place. Ex Leviticus 18 and 5. Keep my decrees and laws for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am Yah. The Most High saying who he is and saying what he requires. The Most High commanded his chosen people to live by laws. Leviticus 26, 1 through 3. And we are there. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves and do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down for it. I am Yah your limo. How can you worship something that's been created by hands, right? You're with to worship the most high in him alone. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am Yah. We commanded to keep the Sabbaths, right? The seventh day rest. That's what the most high did. He created the, all that he created and then he rested. And, and he told us that we should rest, meaning that we honor him. We honor what he did in creation. And we allow this body to rest from the things that we constantly do six days a week and to focus on him and to give him honor so that we can be sanctified, so we can be recharged, right? Hallelujah. Showing that we are the people when we do what he says, right? And then um, verse three, uh, if you follow my decrees, it's conditional and are careful to obey my commands is conditional. I will send rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Nobody's gonna be hungry, starving. There's not gonna be any famine, no drought, right? This is the promise of the Most High. And in Exodus 21 through 11, is about honoring the Most High and um, again, forsaken idols, images in the heaven above, earth beneath and the water below. And um, 
also loving him and loving his laws. And then, um, let's see, uh, and then I'm not uh, blaspheming his name and then keeping the Sabbaths. The first four commandments are honoring the most high, right? Completely and totally forsaken all other gods. And, and that is what he requires. And yeah, he gets to do that because he is the creator, right? Acknowledging the most high alone as supreme, no idol worship. As I said, keeping the Sabbaths, Leviticus 23, the weekly Sabbaths, annual Sabbaths, and land Sabbaths. Yes, even the land is supposed to have rest in the seventh year. We're not supposed to till crops. Excuse me. We're supposed to just let the land rest. Everything needs to rest. It needs rest. This is how the Most High established it. When we allow this body to have that 24-hour period of rest, we can get recharged. It's good for our health. Uh, uh, physically, it's good for us spiritually in every way, emotionally, just be recharged, allow yourself to just relax. This is what the most I commanded, and we should not have a problem wanting to do it. The seven feast days, Passover, and unleavened bread, um, the uh, first fruits, you know, giving uh, of the first fruits uh, from the land, from our um, earnings, and Pentecost. Um, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. We are supposed to honor these days. He said when we do it, our enemies will not be able to fight us. They will not be able to overtake us, right? When If our men would present themselves three times a year, that's in Deuteronomy, all right? Not misusing his name. I already mentioned that. Uh, what's that? That's the third commandment, right? And honoring our father and mother, which is the fifth commandment. Now, righteousness proceeds from where? The most high, the creator, right? Yahweh, Yahuwah. Uh, Zambe, Yame, all the names, Chuklu, Cheneke, all the names we call the Most High. Exodus 20 and 17. So the first four commandments are our relationship to the Most High, humans to the Most High. And the um, commandments uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, that's 6. Those commandments are our relationship to each other, human to human relations. And the first one is to honor father and mother. You see, if you want to have a standard of righteousness, first of all, is to honor the creator. And then it, um, because the most high is over man and man is over the household. And so that's how you have an orderly home, as I mentioned before. So we are to order our parents. Children have to order the parents, honor the parents. And it's a promise if you honor them that you will, you have a long life, right? In the land, the scripture says. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days will be long in thy land, which the Lord thy Yah gives thee. So he's given us a land. We're going to go there in a minute. So we are to honor our parents. We see there's a lot of disobedience today. May the Most High have mercy. Uh, children have lost respect for their parents, right? So may the Most High redeem, restore, deliver, renew, uh, heal our, our, our families. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't give false testimony, don't lie, right? Don't covet. If we can do these commandments, we can see that there will be much more orderly people, right? Righteousness proceeds from the most high. And this is just the commandments, uh, the human to human relationship commandments. Now, so the most high um, created a land for us. Where's that land? Africa. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all the empires, right? You can see them. The Ethiopian Empire, Kingdom of Aksum, the Batwizi Empire, um, Luba State, Great Zimbabwe Empire, Congo Empire. Um, we have Sangay Empire, Empire of Kanem, Empire of Ghana. So the Mali Empire, all throughout Africa, there's many incredible um, empires, right? And so I'm not mentioning them all. So he gave us a beautiful land, earth, right? This is where we dwell. Mm -hmm. And then that is Genesis 1 and 1. So let's go there. Genesis 1 and 1, and we are there. In the beginning, Yah created the heavens and the earth. So the Most High is the creator of all. Mm -hmm. The Most High created, right? We're not, uh, it's no evolution that we... No, like, we don't believe in that, you know, we came about as some uh, spontaneous combustion. The Most High created us very fabulously, very incredibly, very amazingly, he created us, right? So he created 
the heavens and the earth. We're talking about where he, a place where we can live. This is what a father does. He provides, right? A place for his children. Mm -hmm. And this is what he gave us, the earth. Amen. Oh. And then he gave us the universe, right? The sun, Genesis 1 and 3. Yah said, let there be light. And there was light. He saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness so that we could see where we're going so that we can be nourished in our bodies from the sun and that plant life could be nourished, right? Because um, sunlight is one of the things that's needed for plant life. And then he gave us the moon in uh, verse 14. He says, um, and Yah said, let there be lights in, in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, right? And we celebrate the new moon, all praise to the most high Yah. Mm -hmm. So yes. And then, um, so he gave us the uh, lesser light for the night, the moon, so we can still have light. And then we also have the brighter light for the day, the sun. Uh -huh. And then we also see that um, in Genesis 1 and 20, he gave us sea animals. And Yasa let the water team with living creatures and let birds fly. So we have animals that fly and birds that sing so beautifully. He created birds to sing. That is amazing, right? And so he created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing in which the water deems, teams and that moves about in it and their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And Yah saw that it was good. He blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas. Let the birds increase on the earth and let, and then, and there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. So we know that the day starts in the evening, right? From evening to evening, Leviticus 23 and 32. All right. And then land animals, 24 to 25, right? I'm not going to read all of the scriptures. And then plants, Genesis 1, 11 through 12. We praise the most high for vegetation, the green uh, leaves and um uh, Foods that we can eat that are good for antioxidants, build up our immune system, <laughs> keep our digestion nice and clean, kidneys, liver, right, stomach, all the body parts, colon, intestines, keeping all that stuff flowing well when we eat the proper foods. He's given us plants, right? And so hopefully we're going to be making sure that we're taking care of this body. He's given us all the things we need. Water, Genesis 9, 1, 9 through 10. Yah said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. So we have rivers, right? Zambi River, Congo River. Mm -hmm. We have um, um, lakes like Huron, like Michigan. Uh, we have the Nile River. We have uh, oceans, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean. We have all these wonderful bodies of water that the Most High has given us, right? Because we need water. Our bodies are about, what, 70% water. They say drink um, six to eight glasses or eight to 10. So he's given us the land, which we can live on. He's given us all uh, the animals to help us in the land. Animals play their part, right? And then we all we are in control of them all, right? We're getting there. And then gave us plants. He's gave us he's given us water. This is what a father does. Look at this beautiful Africa that he's created. Uh huh. And then he created us. So before he made sure everything was in place. This is what a father does, right? Make sure everything is in place in the household. Uh huh. So before a family, a husband and wife starts to have children, um, it's really good to make sure everything is there in that household to make sure that the household will be provided for because this is the standard that the Most High has set for us. He gave us the example by which we can follow. Let's look at Genesis 1 and 27. Mm -hmm. So Yah created mankind in his image. Hallelujah, all praise of the Most High Yah. We're creating his image, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Male and female, hallelujah. That is the standard that the Most High created for us, his family. And he gave us his breath in Genesis 2 and 7, Yah formed, um, and then Yah formed a man from the dust of the ground, created the man first, the man is in charge, the man is the head, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Hey, hallelujah. They say man lived with the most high um, millions of years before he became a physical being, a spirit being, and then he became flesh. So that's one um, perspective.
So all praise to the Most High Yah for creating us in his image. And yeah, and then he gave us dominion, told us to take, have dominion. Let's read that, uh, verse 28 of Genesis 1. Yah blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. He gave us charge over everything. Wow, amazing, awesome. We are to be the stewards of the most highest creation. Hallelujah. What a wonderful father he is. There's a song that says he's a good, good father. That's who he is. Hallelujah. That's who you are. That's who he is. Now, so he created this beautiful land in Africa. We're focusing on it because we believe that as our homeland. And he filled it with many resources, unlike any other land. Hallelujah. Petroleum, gas, uranium, gold, uh, phosphates, uh, iron ore, uh, titanium, fish, diamonds, timber, uh, cobalt, nickel. Um, what else? Um, copper, right? So many beautiful coal, graphite, ah, water, all the beautiful things that the Most High created in this wonderful land, Africa, where he placed his people, those first created in his image. This is what the Most High did. Create a wonderful place for us to live, giving us all the amazing resources. Mm -hmm. Fabulously created us in his image to show forth his glory. Given us laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments by which we should follow. That he is not done for any other people, the scripture says. He didn't do it for anybody else, but he did it for his people. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And made us the stewards. Look how he's created us in his image. Look at these beautiful, fabulous um, depictions of our people and how we look to reflect that glory. Here we have this tongue. We have this skin tone of melanin, this skin tone of melanin, mm -hmm. this body stature and skin tone, this skin tone, this kind of hair, our hair that can grow like Samson's hair was growing. It was strengthened his hair. He had a covenant as a Nazarite that he was not supposed to cut his hair. And then we have this, um, this look where our hair can become an Afro, right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at these beautiful images. Mm, mm, mm. All praise to the Most High, yeah. So again, the Most High is the creator of the family. He is the creator. of Now, what is a family? A family consists of a father, a mother, and children, right? This seems so elementary, but there's a lot of confusion going on that it's not so elementary because we see that there are deviations right, of what the family is truly supposed to represent today. We see many um, alternative kinds of families that the Most High never, never, ever intended to be. So Genesis 4, 1 through 2, let's read that. Uh -huh. Genesis 4, 1 to 2. Adam made love to his wife Eve. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of Yah, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Okay. And so now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. So the children are born on the earth and they come with different talents and skills, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important for us as parents to know what those skills and talents are and to nurture them because it will bless the children, it will bless the family. Mm -hmm. Family, again, mother, father, children. The spiritual covering is the of the household is who? The father. Genesis 2, 16 to 17. And it reads, um, and Yah commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. From when you eat from it, you will certainly die. So the man is a spiritual covering. He gave this commandment to the man. And it's up to the man to run the household, right? To give structure, to give order, to give stability, to make sure there's security and to make sure the family is provided for. Genesis 3 and 16. So what happened with that? Um, 
So what happened was that is that man disobeyed. And so then things became difficult, right? Tilling the land, like the most high said, he's going to curse the land because he listened. He said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree, which I commanded, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. So things became difficult for us human beings. Now we have to um, really struggle to get our sub uh, sustenance, if you will. Let's look at Genesis 18 and 19. Genesis 18 and 19 reads, For I have chosen him. Oh, this is Abraham. I have chosen him, him, male. The male figure is the person in charge. I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household. The man gives order. The man gives direction. The man is the head of the household. He's the provider, right? Genesis 2 and 15. Yas took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it, right? So we still have to, you know, take care of the land. It's just not going to, you know, um, be there without someone putting their hand, hands on it, right? Planting seeds so that they'll grow, tilling the land so that you can plant the seeds so that it can grow, right? Making sure things are adequately planted uh, during the proper season and making sure it's properly watered. You know, being stewards over what the Most High has created. So the man is the provider of the household. And 3, 17 to 19, um, is how the land got cursed because of falling away from the commands and the standards of the most high. So now he's made sure that the man is in charge and he's selected for the army. There's an army. It's also um, given for security issues. So the most high makes sure that there is security, security adequate security mm -hmm. as a man provides adequate security in numbers one and three. And it's mostly men that go to war, right? So yeah, the men are at risk because they have a, a great role of responsibility, which women should not be wanting to um, have that responsibility. Unfortunately, some women have become heads of their households because of the troubles that are on the land. So in Numbers 1 and 3, he made sure there's an army. You and Aaron are to count according to their divisions. All the men in Israel who are 20 years old or more and able to serve in the army, one man from each tribe, each of them, the head of his family, is to help you. Okay, so the Most High made sure that his people were secure with an army. And then verses 4 to 54 shows how the army is uh, designated. The man is the protector of the family, right? Select men, right? You, Aaron, you and Aaron are to count according to their divisions, all the men in Israel. So it's the man who provides food, sustenance. It's the man who provides security, right? He's the protector of the family. Genesis 1, um, 14 to 16. All right, let's continue. And then, as I said, the man is the head of the household. The most High commanded man to teach the family in the ways of, in his ways. Genesis 18 and 19, he said, I've chosen Abraham because... I know that he's going to show his children. He's going to lead them in the right way. And the man receives directions from the Most High. The man cannot direct or lead unless he's under that authority of the Most High. He has to be under that authority. He has to be following the Most High standards or else how can he know how to lead his family? Joshua was directed, I'm sorry, Joseph was directed by the angel in Matthew 2 and 13, right? So it's the man who has the spiritual um, wherewithal to be able to lead and guide the family. Joseph had to take Messiah, the one they called Jesus Christ, to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill him. So the angel spoke to Joseph and told him what to do. Angels do speak to uh, wives sometimes, right? And um, sometimes a wife will step in and do something because maybe the husband might be lacking in some way, as in the case of Zipporah when she circumcised um, their first child. And yeah, that, that happened. And so, yeah, but for the most part, the man is in charge. So all praise to the most high. Joseph takes the family to the feast to celebrate. Again, making sure that the family's following the commandments. Joseph took his family to the feast and they celebrated that feast in Luke 2, 41 to 42. 
And we see they keep the laws and, and what is called the Old Testament as well as the New, even though we know the Bible is one book, not an old and new, right? They tried to break it up so they could say, we're not doing that one anymore. Now we're doing this, right? No, that's not what the Most High is saying. So the father, the husband, the man leads the family in the direction that they need to go. Um, he's the spiritual covering for the family, make it short. Joseph took his family to those feast days. Uh -huh. And then we see here that, um, whoopsie, there are, again, are many different types of kingdoms and different types of lands, African peoples, right, that we have descended from. Uh, kingdom of, um, is this Songhe? Um, No, that's Dongora. That was the 6th to the 14th century. The kingdom of Alodia. Um, we have um, kingdom of Aksum. Uh, Abyssinia, Ethiopia, that's the 13th to the 20th century CE. The Swahili coast, the 12th to the 15th century, that's uh, in the area where Tanzania. Kingdom of Luba, looks like in the South African area. And then we have the kingdom of Congo, right? Kingdom of Benin, 12th to the 19th century. Kingdom of um, Ife, the 11th to the 15th century. And then that looks like it's around somewhere in Nigeria, I can't really tell based on this map, oopsie. And then we have the Ghana Kingdom, Ghana Empire, the sixth through the 13th century. We have the Wolof, uh, Jolof um, Kingdom, and that should be in uh, where, maybe the Gambia or Senegal. And yeah, so we have different empires and different kingdoms uh, from uh, these kingdoms, which we have descended from. And the Most High has created a fabulous, wonderful people to give him honor. Again, in this wonderful land, Africa, the land of milk and honey, of plenty, of no lack of resources, right? Now, and he's done that through the family. So the family that we've come through in the Americas, the family grew, right? Multiplied into kingdoms and empires, right? So from this African family, from these African empires, um, after this, um, there was a, a designated people who were taken from Africa and brought to the Americas, we descended from these vast, amazing, incredible kingdoms, right? So we have an awesome heritage. So we should be excited and celebrating. And that's what we're doing in this month. We celebrate always, but this month is specifically set aside. So the family grew, multiplied into kingdoms and empires, Genesis 1 and 28. We read that. And see the family, look. Mm -hmm. See how this family continues to hold many of their African um, phenotypes, if you will, in terms of their melanated skin. The women are wearing dresses. Their hair is not covered here, but this mother's hair is covered, right? And yeah, these are our people. This is what our family, look at this. this is a, a wonderful family. It looks like there's a father. Maybe there's a grandpa, wife, there's children. Could be some grandbabies, right? the family looks to be intact, right? Now, what happened? Slavery occurred, kidnapped from the homeland, motherland, in chains and bonds on a ship, and the slave people, slave masters, they call them, right? Slave owners, selling people like animals, like chattel, scantily clothed, right? In a ship that is very... Uh, tight in quarters, sicknesses and diseases. Many are dying. That some jumped off the boat, ship, uh, as it said in history. Uh, here, some are being whipped. Look at the marks on the body, right? Look at this this European woman scolding this woman, right? She's probably talking to her like she's a child, like she's nothing. And look at these horrors, right? Treating our men like they're nothing, just taking away their manhood, taking away their power that the Most High gave us. Look at the kingdoms we've descended from now, all these empires, and they've 